Hey, and now we return to our regularly scheduled Turtles coverage uh, after covering our Proton Pack last week. This is the last in the set of things that came from NECA. If you ordered their uh, Secret of the Ooze Pack, where they had the VHS set, the accessory set, and then the reissue of Tokut and Razar. Missed this the first time around, so I'm really excited about getting this piece. Uh, NECA said that you get everything you got from the first release in this box, so we'll check that out to make sure that's the case. But as always, I like taking a look at the box work first to see uh, just this great thing NECA does with all its product shots. So as you can see here, they have the window in the front with these characters, quite statuesque, quite large. Uh, really like the design of these guys. A lot of accessories you can see here inside the packaging. And then I'm always happy to see on the back these, this product art where they have the action figures and a couple of, of different scenes from the film. You got the battle with the turtles. You got the, the pre-fight donut ceremony there where they found the little cubes and the num-nums. And uh, going over some of the features you could do with the characters. And then, of course, you got Toka and Razar bookending the box on each of the sides. But I don't want to spend too much time in the box because it's really what's inside that counts. So let's crack this guy open and check him out. All right, going to aim for a full unboxing today without trying to not to mess this, mess this up at all. But we'll see. Uh, just an easy piece of tape on the side. Not too much there to worry about. And then I'm going to slide this guy out. I like to keep the NECA boxes. I have a whole cabinet full of them, so I don't like to mess these up, so I'm always careful opening them. Um, let's see if this one has a scene in the back, and it does. Uh, okay, apt to the theme here, we have the inside of that little tool shed they were staying in, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you can see some of the, the ropes there. It might be reflective because of the light, but some of the ropes hanging in the back, an electrical box, and some of the debris on the floor. So that's pretty cool that that's what they uh, put in the back here just to keep it um, keep it related to the to the scene. And then of course we got our characters here. A uh, lot going on in this box. We have a lot of hand accessories. We have a lot of weapon accessories and a lot of additional accessories. And of course the, the thing I was looking for was this little box for the pre-fight uh, donuts. I'm really glad that this is included here. Uh, I believe this was included in the original set, and I didn't see it in the window, and I was a little worried about it, but uh, obviously it is included, so I'll just crack this open just to make sure I get this out without crushing it. Uh, NECA does a lot of cardboard accessories, and it's kind of essential, uh, cardboard and paper, uh, but at the same time, I'm really worried about them like disintegrating <laughs> over the years or, or just getting destroyed really easily. Uh, so yeah, this one is exactly the box here. Uh, I guess this one, to be true, it was a cardboard box in the movie, so it'd be weird not to do it as cardboard if you did it some kind of plastic thing. But at the same time, the longevity of that is not going to be as great as uh, if it were made out of plastic, which I'm fine with them honestly doing a plastic uh, piece instead. And then just, um, you know, you'd, you'd have that for much longer. But uh, yeah, this, this is going to have a lot of these little twisty tabs holding these characters in place. Um, both good and bad. Uh, these always take me a while to undo. And I don't like fussing around with them. Uh, I could cut, but these are a little bit thicker here. And I'm worried about the, the wire um, honestly cutting me. So we'll just uh, undo it here. I'm almost through it. So I'm going to start with uh, Toka. Um, Huge fan of Toka. Uh, they eventually ad adapted these guys into the cartoon after a while. I know when this movie came out, we were all kind of hoping for Bebop and Rocksteady, and we're confused why they kind of created these, or put these guys into it instead. But um, they ended up being a, a pleasant surprise. I think they worked, ultimately. Uh, he also has some plastic tabs here down on the, on, on the legs, and there goes my X-Acto knife. That's weird. Um, so... Just a lot holding him into, into position here. So if you're just displaying him, I guess he's, get, he's not going to be going anywhere. It's going to look pretty good. Uh, he's also got some on the arms as well. So he is held in place firmly. And on this arm as well. Okay. So there we go. We got our Toka finally coming out here. If I could eventually get this off the shelf. And securely wrapped around him. 
So we have Toka here, a lot of great detail on the shell. I'll give you a close up here of a, a 360. You can see they did a lot of great detailing on the, the beak, on the eyes, on his, uh, it's not really armor, but he's got like a little elbow pad on like you were playing the sports. Like, looks like these are elbow and knee pads if you were going uh, skating or something like that. So it kind of, uh, they kind of just accent the figure here. And he's got these, these wraps on his wrists and he's got the wraps on the legs as well but really love how they did the the nails the talons or, or what have you here on the snapping turtle and gave them just a little bit of uh, additional paint applications on the ends of them that really make them pop um, i think this character he's kind of he's kind of lanky looking and, and boxy looking to begin with and that was kind of how he looked in the film so i think they really captured the the really odd design of uh, toka in this in this figure he's just kind of weird i mean all these guys look kind of weird because these were these were not uh, cgi these were all um real effects at the time they were just kind of created in the uh i believe it was the jim henson uh creature shop uh he's supposed to have an articulated facial feature so i'll check this out here i think his his yeah his little eyebrows his brows move a little bit so you could have sort of uh a raised ridge and give him an angry face or a, a dubious look. Uh, he's kind of does all of that there. His beak moves up and down a little bit, and I believe his mouth even opens a little bit. Yep, here we go. Wow, <laughs> just as surprised as I am. So he has this full range of facial expression, which is really cool that they added that extra little bit level of detail to it. Um, they did have some expressions in the movie, so they really captured that. Plus, he could eat those little uh, anti-mutagen or demutagen cubes, uh, the num-nums, <laughs> as they called them there. So that's pretty cool that they, they worked that detail into him there. And, of course, he's got that great shell covering on the front as well. Um, but I'm just really enthralled by this back shell. I mean, they did a great job. It's, it's uh, both uh, scary <laughs> and uh, sharp, but also it has a little give to it so you're not going to impale yourself but uh, not so much give that I'm worried about these breaking. I mean, this is still pretty pretty solid. I mean, this is an adult collectible. This is not a, a children's toy. Um, I think a kid would probably hurt himself on this thing pretty easily. Uh, so that's pretty cool that they uh, did all that great level of detailing and uh, layering on this, on this character, great paint applications. And he's just a uh, very statuesque, very, very uh, premium quality kind of uh, going on for him. So I appreciate that. Let's take a look at Razar now. Uh, no giant tabs holding this guy in place. He's just held in by these little um, little uh, transparent tabs that they put on the characters to keep them in, uh, in the boxes. Uh, this has been kind of like the staple of characters for as long as I can remember, uh, securing these guys in with these little tabs. Um, I never really got it, but I guess it just holds them in place. Um, and they're cheap. <laughs> So it's it's easily done. He has got probably a lot more detail going on than Toka, just because he's got all this this I will call this stuff armor. I mean, he's got that uh, car grill as a chest plate here, and it's held on by these chains. And these chains are not fastened to the character. You can see here in the the 360, the, these are these are sitting on top independently. So it's amazing they did that additional detail there. Uh, the loincloth on him looks great as well. You can see all that armor, these spikes on his uh, thigh armor here, uh, his knee armor. I'm not quite sure what these what pieces of junkyard these are. They look like little bicycle wheels on the side here. But uh, it's, again, great, great paint applications on the claws. Uh, they look amazing. Uh, the whole character, he's got that depth with the, uh, the hair, uh, making it look very realistic on him as well. Uh, very tall, very... Very <laughs> imposing figure they got, and they get amazing work on that face. I absolutely love it. Um, this one is also supposed to have some additional articulation on the, the face. I'll see here. I don't think the ears move, but uh, you could you could definitely move the mouth and uh, maybe the eyes, the eyebrows. I'm not getting any eyebrow articulation, uh, but definitely I can move the mouth. That does open and close really well. Um, you could turn the head here, but I don't see any additional articulation like you do with uh, Toka and his eyebrows. So this one just seems to be more geared toward um, the mouth. 
in this in, in this sense, which is it's just fine. I mean, it's a lot of expression right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's just he looks so amazing. These um, the detailing they put on, particularly this um, this front grill they have in the armor. It just looks so much better than I remember the the figures did when I was a kid that were uh, based on the movie. Um, they were first of all they were a lot smaller. But they did not have this level of detail going into the character. Um, or this level of articulation. This is just amazing to be able to see these characters that look like they were miniatures used from a shot in the film, essentially, brought back to life. Uh, just absolutely amazing. Uh, of course, they come with an assortment of hands um, to hold different accessories. Uh, I'll show you those in a second. Um, but just to speed things up, I'm going to do a quick cut and then we'll go through over the accessories. Okay, so I'll give you some close-ups of all these so you can see them. Uh, of course, we have another TGRI mutagen canister. Uh, these have been used quite liberally throughout the Secret of the Use series. I think essentially every single character in NECA made in the series so far has had this um, vial. Uh, it was only really with Shredder uh, and Tatsu in the film uh, that it wasn't... Uh, it was not uh, held by these characters, but it's included anyway. So it's another ooze vial we get. Uh, we have some hands for uh, Toko and Razar here. So I'm going to call these uh, weapon holding hands we have here. And then, uh, I, I mean, these are just gesturing or additional holding hands. Uh, same with uh, Razar, so they, or Toko, so they each have the four additional hands to let them grasp additional weapons. Uh, I did the VHS box set and I showed you guys the uh, fire extinguisher and I said in the film there were two. One for Leo, one for Donnie. That only came with one. Here's another one. So if you buy this set you get the second fire extinguisher and now you can do the full scene um, from the, the dance club fight. So that's cool that we got the second fire extinguisher now so that completes the set. Of course we have the ceremonial pre-fight donuts in the box here, the powder side and then underneath you can see the, the actual donuts. So these fit nicely inside the box. Uh, there's even one missing, so you can see that they were already eaten. Uh, so this is uh, cool to have this uh, fully included in this set. So you can relive that scene as well. And then they even included one smashed donut with the little cube on the inside here. So that's pretty cool as well that you get that all in this set. So you have the whole scene pretty much completed. Now onto accessories and weapons. Uh, this is this is what's kind of weird about this set. Uh, in the movie, they didn't really use any weapons. Uh, they mostly there's the three major scenes they were in. One where they were tearing apart the street. Um, I guess you could say that this is a, it, it kind of looks like a piece of one of the utility poles they tore apart. So it could be repurposed as a weapon, I guess. So you have this, this utility pole piece that they, on the box is pictured with Razar, and I guess it's appropriate because he tore apart, tore apart the utility pole. Uh, so you have that here, and it kind of has these claw marks in it, I guess that match up with one of his hands. So he could likely hold this here in this hand and um, put it inside these, uh, these holes and it would just give it a secure grip. I'm um, not going to fuss with that, but I'll, I'll give you guys a, a close-up of him later holding the the, the bat, uh, we'll call it. And then there's this um, piece of lead pipe here that on the box is shown with, uh, with Toka there. But actually in the movie, there's the scene uh, right after Shredder meets them for the first time um, and was th thinking about euthanizing him. Uh, Razar takes this and bends it. So uh, actually, and it's got a little give to it. Um, I don't know if I want to bend it because it might break, but it does have a little give to it. Uh, but essentially this was used by Razar in the movie, so this actually was an accessory, um, but he didn't use it as a weapon. The only thing he kind of used as a weapon was this shield, which is a, uh, I guess, a hubcap for a really giant construction vehicle or something. And um, he had that on his left arm when he went into to battle, when he, that scene where they met the turtles for the first time. Uh, the second time they didn't have any weapons, but in that first scene he did have a weapon. He had this, if you want to call it a weapon, this shield which he had on his arm here. I'm guessing to get this on, you're gonna have to uh, take the hand off and maneuver it up uh, onto the arm. So um, I'll, I'll do that and give you guys a shot of what this looks like with the accessories in each of the characters. But that's basically it. Uh, this, this set, I, like I said, in the movie, neither of these guys had weapons. They were not 
weapons. They were more brawlers. They just kind of uh, hit anything that came in front of them. Uh, they were hammers and everything in front of them was a nail, essentially. So they just, they smashed. And uh, in true Rampage fashion, these two uh, destroyed a city block and then fought the turtles and then fought them again at the dance club scene. Uh, so there's not a lot of accessories. The accessories are more about the scene they were in. Uh, this would be from the, the second uh, battle they had with the turtles where they had the pre-fight donuts and uh, the club scene where they, with the fire extinguisher. So that's cool. They are included it. These, I guess, are just for, for some color um, from different parts of the film. But the truly great thing here is the uh, costume design and the detail they surrounded in that. But let me show you a couple of shots of these guys with the accessories so you can see how they fit in. So I wanted to show, start off by showing you that great expression Toka could get. Here he has this, this innocent look to him, like he's not going to hurt you. He's, he's kind of sad about it. Then, of course, through some simple manipulation of the face, he's not sad about it anymore. Uh, you can see he's got that pipe in his weapon-holding hand. Out of all the hands, he only really has uh, a hand like this on the left and right that you can fit the pipe in. And uh, it takes a little maneuvering in this right hand. I always like to use the end of a, a pen, a retractable pen, because it starts off a, a little uh, narrower and it gets wider, allowing you to maneuver the fingers open without breaking anything or, or hurting yourself because some of them are really stiff and allow you to sneak that um, sneak that accessory into the hand. So uh, he has one on his left and one on his right that you could use to hold this pipe. The other two hands are really more like fists. Uh, they're not going to hold anything. Uh, they're very, very closed. So it's more like a smashing kind of um, hand. I always think Razar was the, the more fearsome of the two with that big open grin on him. Uh, he kind of comes to fall with his weapon holding hand. You can maneuver that in there a little bit easier. They kind of have a flat side to the hand and a round side to kind of line up that piece of wood or utility pole as it goes in the hand. Of course, the more screen accurate look when he is using his hubcap shield. Uh, you don't need to take the arm off to put this on. The straps underneath are actually rubber and there's a slit in one side. So you just trying to drape it over the arm. So it's kind of easy to get on there, even with that uh, extra piece of um, uh, bandaging he's got hanging off his, his wrist there. Uh, but I think this really makes the figure pop is when he has this last piece of his armor set. Overall, I thought they did a great job with the layering of the uh, junkyard armor on him. You can see the tire treads on his, his wrists and his uh, thighs there, and then all the little pieces of shrapnel on them and then of course that that great grill they have on the front for his uh, chest plate and the chains on the back uh, of the two in a set this one just far and away uh, stands out as being extremely highly detailed and just looks really true to the uh, screen image so that's everything uh, well except I didn't do the hand test yet I always do the hand test so I gotta make sure I include that here um, I did it in the chains up shots but you guys didn't see it this one wasn't too bad. Again, I like doing the twisting motion. I've had uh, hit or misses with NECA in the past where I've had the wrist joint snap and I do not want that to happen on these guys. Uh, so that popped out there. I'm just gonna put one of these standard hands back in here and again, twisting while putting a little force and that's it. Uh, no problems on that. I think the trick is that twisting motion, slowly pulling pressure instead of just trying to yank it out all at once, uh, keeps it from breaking, which is kind of what I wanna do. Uh, so. That's Toka and Razar. Each of them have their own great attributes to them. Toka's got a lot of that great expression in the face where you can move the brow ridges here and the, the beak and the, the mouth. And Razar, he's got this incredible, incredible detailing on his body with all this great armor that was on the character in the film. Has this great lifelike, almost model-like appearance to him. Uh, so he just came out really great. Uh, they both did. This is a great set. I'm glad this was a set and that these weren't individual characters because you really can't have one without the other. I'm glad we had the second fire extinguisher so we could round out the scene there. Uh, I'm glad it cre included the little pre-fight donuts. I mean, this has everything it needs and then some extra accessories. Uh, so this was a really well thought out set. Uh, one of my favorite sets so far. Really glad I got it finally. Uh, I think you will be too if you were able to pick it up. Uh, hopefully if it, you didn't get it when it was still available, they're, they're taking it out of the vault and launch it again. Uh, after two offerings, this was quite a popular set, and you could see why that these guys just turned out great. Some of the best things they, they've done so far. 
and I think you guys will really like them if you were lucky enough to get your hands on them or if you want to spend that extra money and get them out of the secondary market. They are really worth it. Um, they are quite amazing and they really round out your Secret of the U set or your TMNT movie line. So um, here they are. They're great. Check them out. Uh, the only other figure that's coming up in the line that we know about so far that was revealed was Kino. Uh, looking forward to that guy just to round out the cast of characters, get some more human characters into there. Uh, no word yet on if we're going to get a new April because the actress changed over in that film. Uh, we still don't have a tattoo. Uh, I know I've talked to NECA reps. They are working on a tattoo. It's, it's something about rights and it's a little bit um, more confusing than I uh, understand. But uh, hopefully we get that character at some point because uh, he was kind of pivotal in both films. Uh, it'd be great to get some Remnant Foot Clan from Secret of the Ooze where they have so, sort of these tattered uniforms. Uh, also, April's cameraman, who turned out to be a, a double agent for the foot, could have a uh, character with mask off. That would be great as well. So uh, there's some other characters out there to just build out and expand the line. That would be great. But uh, we got a lot right now uh, in this, this wave. It's building up. Uh, the Secret of the Ooze line is, is starting to uh, grow. So great that we're getting all these characters. Great that we got these reissues to get them back in the line. Very excited about what's next. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I got some more turtle surprises this month. So tune back in for the next one. It's quite a unique piece. I'll say that. <laughs> I don't want to give it away. Uh, but that's all I got for now. So as always, like, subscribe, and follow. And we'll see you guys next time.